Well, a new study out this year shows the shifting tornado alley with climate change. The warmer our climate gets, where supercells form and the time that they form could be changing. So to understand how climate change affects severe weather, we first have to identify some very key big ingredients. We're going to be talking about cold air coming from the north, hot dry air that comes in from the southwest, and of course the source of a lot of moisture, uh, heat and humidity from the Gulf of Mexico into the deep south. So we're going to start with the jet stream first and shear, very important ingredients, and that's dependent on the difference in temperatures between air mass. What happens in the spring and into the early summer, things are heating up, moistening up in the south, and we get cold air coming in from the north. It's left over, of course, from the winter. But increasingly with climate change, because the Arctic is warming faster than anywhere else on the planet, that temperature difference is decreasing between the air masses. So we're already seeing weaker jet streams are becoming more wobbly. Uh, so to understand how the jet stream forms, it's based on air pressure. The warmer the air mass is, the more air there is aloft, and that air wants to move towards a colder air mass. It's basic gravity. There's more air aloft above a warmer air mass. When you decrease that temperature difference, there's less of that gravitational pull. The jet stream gets weaker. Now, it's based on the biggest temperature differences, and we can see that on a basic weather map. Uh, where we see two jet streaks, we call this, is where we see the biggest temperature differences on this particular map uh, around Hudson Bay. So when you decrease those temperature differences, you're going to decrease the jet stream. And the jet stream is proportional to wind shear, which is important for organizing storms. Again, look at where the jet streak is here in the southwest, and then that's where you have the general area of the highest shear. And we talk about shear a lot in thunderstorms because it's the difference between a regular thunderstorm and an organized thunderstorm. Your normal thunderstorm, air moves upward, but when you have shifting wind speeds and direction with height, that allows that updraft to tilt, and that separates the cool downdraft air from the inflow air, and that keeps thunderstorms going longer. And we get to the king of thunderstorms, supercells, that takes it to another level and allows that updraft to rotate. That requires winds moving in different directions and speeds on a much higher scale. And it really just organizes all the outflow air, brings in the inflow air, and supercells can last for hours because of this organization. So when we're decreasing the shear, you decrease the ability to create supercells. The next thing we're going to talk about is another very key important ingredient, and that's hot air from the southwest. It comes in the form of what we call a cap. So this is looking at temperatures at 4,000 feet and 10,000 feet. The important thing to notice, the source of hot air aloft comes from the desert southwest and some of the higher elevations uh, that is just west of the plains. This air often moves into the plains, and it's important because a cap keeps energy trapped in the lower surface. The heat and humidity kind of sits there and can't build until a forcing mechanism like a cold front or you just develop enough instability where it finally breaks through late in the day. If it broke through too early, all the energy gets dispersed and you can't get big thunderstorms to form. But when a stronger cap develops, that traps the heat indefinitely and thunderstorms can't break through. So as we heat up the southwest, we're also increasing that cap, which will limit some of those supercells. The other thing, of course, the Gulf of Mexico, which we've already been seeing warmer and warmer temperatures, our planet's oceans are getting hotter. So that means there's more juice. Now, can that increase in juice, that energy, that heat and humidity in the Gulf, counter the increasing cap and the decreasing temperature difference that is weakening the jet stream and shear? Mm -hmm. And model simulations show that maybe. So this is looking at different computer models, taking what we know about climate change, and applying that to the real atmosphere. So this is basically where Tornado Alley is now, where we consider it. Anywhere from Texas all the way up to Minnesota, the plains, every storm chaser knows is the place to be in the spring. Now, when we model these scenarios of all these different changing variables with climate change, we get an increase in supercells in the deep south and a decrease in supercells in the traditional supercell hotspot which are the plains. So Western Texas, Nebraska, Kansas, Colorado, even into Minnesota, we see a decrease in overall supercell activity. But we see an increase also in the spring, and we see an increase in supercell activity into the night, meaning once that cap finally breaks down naturally, or early in the spring when we still have enough 
temperature difference to create jet streams and shear. Now the problem is there's more population centers in these areas where supercells are expected to increase with time. So that means potentially a deadlier scenario. There's just more cities in the south than there are in the plains. So again, to recap how this is all changing, a weaker jet stream due to a, a, a lesser temperature difference means less shear, and that means early spring, late fall storms, better chance of seeing those supercells. And the cap in the southwest getting hotter, late spring and summer inhibits storms in the plains in that traditional late spring, early summer time into the Midwest, but isn't quite there yet early in the spring. So again, that favors the south because we're not seeing quite the heat yet to the west. Hotter Gulf of Mexico is obvious. There's just plain more energy that can overcome uh, the, ca the cap. There's more cape or convective available potential energy and enough shear earlier in the spring because we still have leftover winter air masses versus the summer. So climate change could change when severe weather happens and how much of it happens and the time that it happens. So just one of many things we have to monitor with the changing climate on our planet.